to join so they can get a recap afterwards. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the Wells Williams Conversion Project. Um, just out of respect for people's bandwidths, um, other than the person speaking at that time, we're going to turn off videos so that uh, that is not a barrier to anybody joining. Um, the other piece of this is for the Q&A. Please feel free to drop any questions, any technical um, concerns into the chat. I'll be monitoring that as we go through. Um, you can also drop in questions about the project as well. And when we get to the Q&A portion of it, you should be able to raise your hand um, and will then unmute you so that you can ask your questions live. Um, but that way we just don't have people talking over each other. Um, we will both post this recording as well as the slides for the presentation itself to the website uh, after this meeting. So no, no need to, to grab it in real time and frantically take notes. We'll make sure that we get all of that to you. And with that, Keith, I will hand it over to you. Okay. Um... Well, I, well, with Mario's help here, we have some slides to go through. Um, so this is for the Wells Williams Conversion Project uh, downtown. This is a, a view of the future third and Wells. And uh, it's kind of weird to have my face up here twice, but this is who I am. I've been with the city for 19 years now, and I'm the project manager on this project. Um, so we'll just try to go through these pretty quick and leave a lot of time for uh, conversation if need be. But um, so there's different colors here, but the first light green there is the Wells and Williams project, which basically started with taking Wells and Williams and changing them from one way to two way traffic which uh, necessitated rebuilding the four intersections at 2nd and 3rd and Wells and Williams so that we had traffic signals going in all four directions for anticipating a future conversion of 2nd and 3rd. Additionally, we have uh, just about to start downtown. The second blue there is the downtown utility improvement project, and that is as you can see west of Burnett, and that is doing a lot of underground utility upgrade and replacement. The reason their blue doesn't go into our green is because the Wells Williams project has been taking care of the utility improvements downtown. So that's been a lot of our work on second and third over the last number of months. Uh, the purple there, or not sure what color that is, Downtown core streetscape improvements is the work going on on Wells Avenue between South 2nd and South 3rd, and that's currently under construction too, and uh, I can update on that, but they are replacing sidewalk and street lighting, and they are pretty close to being done on the west side and will be flipping to the east side. Uh, they're able to go a little faster because they're not doing any uh, underground utilities, and they're not doing any of the roadway. And then also, <clears throat> Hauser Way here in the gold, there's the intersections at the railroad tracks on Wells and Williams. Back in November, BNSF came in under contract with us to replace the railroad signaling equipment, and uh, so that they faced both directions for the future two-way. Uh, in the process, they decided to pull up their railroad tracks and therefore we took advantage of that time in no last November to also upgrade a few utilities. The work that'll happen in another couple months is to finish all of the sidewalks in that area with nice new sidewalks, curb and bulb outs to, that will look very similar to what we're going to be doing up at second and third. <clears throat> so, Uh, we're going to focus today on in the, the, the black dashes here. Uh, these project goals real quickly, again, convert one-way roads to two-way roads, which should improve the ability for people to get around downtown, improve safety. Uh, one-way roads actually 
tend to increase speeds and also the safety is the uh, the sidewalks and the crossings and the traffic signals are all going to be improved and uh, they'll be updated in terms of the streetscape with landscaping and the like and the city's overall goal along with the uh, utility upgrades is that it will uh, revitalize and encourage development downtown uh, so zooming in on that, this four block or four intersection area, we've been working on the utilities in second and third. There's even work that's been going on. And you can see the new traffic signals materializing. But what we need to talk about is the new intersections that we're gonna rebuild, the roadway in the middle of the intersection and the sidewalks. So we just now have started with pouring curb and gutter and the curb and gutter is really like what you start with and then you can build from that you can build the sidewalk towards the buildings and from the curb and gutter you can build the intersect towards the middle of the road to the intersections and this is what it looked like when we did second and main a couple of years ago this is what happens when you rebuild an intersection we've got to go down i don't know 14 inches um there's additional crushed uh, top course and base course here that we compact. And then we form it up and pour the concrete. And that basically, this picture is to show why you can't drive through these intersections where we're working on the concrete intersections. Uh, that's why we deal with dealing with street closures. And that's what we want to talk about today. So we're going to rebuild four intersections again, two on South 2nd, two on South 3rd. We are scheduled to start February 15th. And uh, while we're working on the intersections, you will still be able to walk through these intersections. So there's no detours for pedestrians, but there will be detours for drivers. And if you were downtown in November, when we had the railroad tracks pulled up, we converted Wells and Williams to two-way cul-de-sacs. And so we'll be having some of those implemented again downtown. But we, uh, we plan to um, coordinate hopefully in advance if you have larger deliveries. And we're encouraging use of the parking garage, the city center parking garage, and uh, potential work on weekends and evenings. So, This is South Third Street, and this is um, relatively new because for almost two years now, we've been doing outreach on this project before we even had a contractor, and the contractor has been on site now since <clears throat> April of last year. We had some open houses where we said we were going to close, completely close the intersections of South Third and Williams and the South Third of Wells in order to rebuild the whole intersection at one time and we were anticipating that to take one to two weeks. Well, this is not what I'm showing you here because right around the first of this year, our contractor met with, they have a subconsult subcontractor, Salinas Concrete, that's gonna do all the concrete work. They're the concrete experts. And they proposed that they can do it a half at a time to their advantage. And also we feel to the advantage of downtown. We feel that keeping South Third Street open with one lane of traffic, which is how it is right now, will be much better received than if we close the whole South Third Street and make people detour around on South Fourth Street. So this is new. Um, we presented this to city council Monday night and uh, I would say that it was favorably received there. So uh, I'll go through this presentation here, but we're gonna do a half at a time at all four of these intersections, starting with the two north halves on South Third Street. And so the half is shown here. And while we work on that half, so this is the intersection of Williams and Third, while we work on that half, we're able to still maintain a lane of traffic. I'm not going to deny that it's going to be tight and it's going to be slow, but I do believe that people downtown 
would prefer the cars go slower. Sometimes we have cars still trying to go down South Third Street too fast, even through our work zones. So when we work on the north side of Williams, and then at the same time down at Wells, we'll be working on the north side, we will create cul-de-sacs. And so if I zoom out, this we're talking about this intersection here and here, the detours will go around and coming up wells, you will go around to main and second and the whole length of wells and the whole length of Williams becomes a two-way cul-de-sac. Again, similar to what we had back in November during the railroad track work. After we do the south side, or excuse me, the north side, we will flip to the south side. We'll still maintain South Third Street. And we will do uh, the cul-de-sacs on the south side. Um, Mario, while I'm talking, just if, interrupt me if something comes up, because I'm having a hard time keeping track of all the chats and everything at the same time. So I'll just keep Sounds talking. good. I will interject if any of them are time sensitive to what you have up. OK, I'd appreciate that so that I can uh, not be looking at too many locations. South sides here, cul-de-sacs um, on the on the blocks between third and fourth. This is actually very similar to what we had in November at the railroad tracks. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back up one again on third though. <clears throat> excuse me. These intersections are going to be really tight. Metro is going to move all of their buses to South Fourth Street for this time period. And there are no stops on South Third Street, so that does not affect anybody getting on and off the buses. And we are going to work with our contractor to put up signage so that over larger vehicles are not trying to make their way through these intersections while we have a half at a time. But we will still need to accommodate local deliveries and we will have our project hotline set up and be reaching out to anybody who knows that they have deliveries that they want to make sure get coordinated with us. Um, so this, again, when this is worked on the south side of South Third Street, as you can see, <clears throat> everything between second and third is now open to back up. So after we're done with South Third Street, which is going to, so one of the, one of the things we showed the council Monday night was uh, we told our contractor, start on South Third Street first. Let's, let's get South Third Street done. And then we'll move up to South Second Street um, because we recognize that the business construction fatigue has been going on downtown for so long. We recognize that. And so we're, so this work on South Third Street would go from February 15th through approximately March 15th, March 20th. And then we'll be able to start opening up South Third Street. We'll still be working on the landscaping hanging the rest of the traffic signals. But by the end of March, South Third Street is starting to look like it's complete. Wells and Williams are not yet turned to, to two-way traffic because we'll then be going up to South Second Street. Uh, South Second Street, we take the same approach. We work on the north sides, maintaining South Second Street and just cul-de-sacs on the top. And then we'll flip to the south side. And some of you may be wondering, it's a little bit more complicated to do these detours up here because of these bridges across the river. So we get some rather long two-way cul-de-sacs, but what we're basically saying is that we're training people that these roads are going to two-way soon anyway, so uh, might as well start getting used to it. Um, but it won't be with the final striping yet. It's highly unlikely we could get down the final striping uh, you, you prefer to wait till a little bit better weather to do permanent striping. So it gets a little complicated in some of these detours um, <clears throat> because so we, we plan to use Burnett and Tobin and possibly even Riverside Drive to get people into here. But we will uh, that thing keep um, south of south of uh, South Fourth Street on Wells Avenue. We intend to put up a, a variable message board sign that tells people, you know, if you're trying to get to the North Renton neighborhood, use the Bronson Bridge across the Cedar River. 
This is the final. So again, four intersections, eight halves, two at a time, South Third Street, North Side, South Third Street, South Sides, same thing up to South Second, North Sides, and then South Sides. So in this situation right here, we have cul-de-sacs on Wells and Williams. So, so it's a little bit um, more impact for businesses here between second and third, because you've already dealt with the cul-de-sac coming from this direction when we were working at third. And when we come up to second, there's a cul-de-sac from this direction. And each of these are approximately two weeks long, 10 days to 14 days at a time. Um, so uh, just want to make people aware of that. We'll again, keep the communication open. So um, as you know, we're doing everything we can to, to one, keep people informed through all of these different uh, flyers and ads. But these, the signage that we've been using on South Third Street will become even more important when we have these cul-de-sacs. So we will have these signs at the entrances to these cul-de-sacs, letting people know, come down this cul-de-sac for these businesses. And we have, well, I think it was 100 or so, 130 different business signs that we are, um, I think we might have actually have on site now. We're trying to get them on site uh, with South Third and Williams being the first intersection we start with on February 15th. And it will be the, the block between second and third. We're working with the uh, with other departments within the city to try to get a little bit more visibility on the parking downtown because we recognize that we have impacted parking. The project on Wells between second and third has impacted parking. Uh, we've tried to pull back our cones as much as possible so that people can park on the street when possible. I know we've you can't get right up to the intersections right now while we're working on them. Uh, a lot of the businesses downtown, the curbside pickup uh, was a request that um, the city has installed. Some banners really trying to get attention to the uh, downtown parking garage. <clears throat> if there's any questions on that, we can deal with it at the end. I touched on the downtown utility improvement project. The, the city's two engineers on this project are, I think, on this call. And so if there's any specific questions, but you can see it's kind of blank right here because that's where the Wells Williams project has already taken care of all those underground utilities. Uh, new sewer and water line on South Second, new stormwater and water lines on South Third. And then starting in, I believe they want to start in either the, towards the end of this month or maybe March of this year. And it is, I believe almost a two year project. So we can deal with that. And they're gonna be going down South Third Street and South Second Street and also doing utility improvements. So the utilities are the water utility sewer or sanitary sewer and storm water, which is uh, you know the runoff from the gutters in the street. So all of those are being upgraded or replaced. And they would point out that the sewer is tying into King County Metro's main line that runs down Burnett and heads out to the treatment facility there in West Renton. And the tie-in is almost 30 feet below the Burnett South Third Street intersection near the, our small clock tower. So they, they go pretty deep because of course, two of those three utilities are not pressurized, their gravity flow. And Michael, I know you're on. Anything that you wanna add here for the DWIP project? Um, not at this time that I can think of. I mean, you know, just for one thing that we are, we are starting to ramp up more of our public information. So, you know, people here now, you know, can be aware that uh, um, we're going to be also coming up with some public and outreach stuff also on this. So this is this is not your only crack at us, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, 
again, the the real intent of this discussion and to this afternoon's um, call it open house or presentation was that starting February 15th through March 20th, intersection work on South 3rd Street. And when that's done, intersection work on South 2nd Street, which will likely go possibly to the end of April. And, and then after that, it's finishing up those traffic signals and putting a new pavement between our four intersections and converting to two-way traffic. So uh, we just wanted to touch on the, we call this the DUIP project. You might hear that uh, downtown utility improvement project. So we just wanted to make people aware that, uh, that we are moving, the city as a whole is gonna continue construction west on South 2nd and South 3rd Street. Um, I guess for purposes of recording this for and posting it, Here's our information uh, with any questions. I have a feeling a lot of you know all this because you're part of this call. The hotline, we're even gonna turn that over to Michael and he can keep using the same hotline uh, for the next two years. Um, I don't know if I have any other slides after this, Mario. Just some of the alternatives and the appendix. Okay. Yep. So, so really, I guess we'll, uh, we'll leave it on this slide so you can kind of see some in the back room but uh, or should I stop sharing I'll keep it no keep it up I think is I'll keep fine it up. I'll bounce around. Um, so the first question we have gotten and please feel free to again either raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question or to um, drop it into the chat uh, Keith can you actually go back one slide there's a request to be able to to copy oh. down some of that contact information yes yes thank you um, the first question is, how will this impact the safety in front of Renton High? Okay, well, that's, um, I can answer first from the Wells Williams project. It doesn't, of course, because we stopped at Burnett. And safety in front of Renton High during the downtown utility improvement project, it will be I'm gonna maybe Michael and, and Ann might chime in here because I don't I know in front of the the Renton High School, uh, South Second Street goes to splits two lanes north of the nice big planter strip with the really old trees, and two lanes to the south, and I don't know it, where the DUIP goes through there. I'll I'll scroll up there, but um, in terms of just overall public safety, it'll be similar to what we've been doing in down town over the last year with pedestrian barriers to keep pedestrians out of the work zone. D the DUIP project like this photo here could have some larger and deeper trenches than what we've had over the past year. And okay, so Michael, orange is stormwater. So it looks like we have utilities on both sides of those trees. I'll let you talk in just a second, Michael. Um, and that's this, I'll let Michael talk to safety during the next two years when this construction is going on, although it won't be for all two years in front of high school. In terms of long-term future, and I'm not sure if the question is about long-term future, at some point South 2nd Street will be converted to two-way traffic as well. And that is envisioned to be one lane in each direction and a center turn lane. What we do right there with the large trees, that is still under design. Uh, but overall, we would improve the pedestrian safety because any new traffic signals, we would um, upgrade to what you're going to see at second and third with um, curb ramps that are safer. And the big, one of the larger things that we're doing downtown is we're putting the signal heads out on mast arms over the street uh, because as some of the businesses would attest to, uh, cars sometimes have not, don't see our traffic signals on the side on the old white poles and they don't stop and they, we get some T-bone accidents downtown. Uh, so if we upgrade, there's, that should improve safety. Um, let's see, this question is from Dan. So feel free to, t to tell me if we didn't touch on it and Michael touch real quickly on safety for while you, the DUIP is under construction. 
So yeah, so generally um, for any type of long-term safety, DUIP should not have any impact positive or negative. Um, we will have, um, you know, obviously construction, it's not, it, it's inherently messy, so to speak. Um, so the contractor and the city will look to try to keep everything as safe as possible. We will have traffic control, we'll view, view traffic control. We will look out for um, pedestrian access and how that's gonna operate. Um, you know, we are gonna be excavating down the middle of the road. We will depend on a certain amount of discretion from people to not wander into a construction zone. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, the contractor will, will be aware try to keep stuff as safe as possible because nobody wants any uh, any any issues out there. You know, as I zoomed in here, Michael, the these yellow and gray dashed lines and this yellow gray dashed line there, if people are not truly aware, but they've heard me talk about it in other Wells Williams meetings, these are huge water lines that go to Seattle Public Utilities, 66 inches. Um, that's the height of some of the people on this call, right? And then there's two that come down South Third and cut through this alignment. And then there's one in South Second Street. And I brought this up in what the Wells and Women's Project is. These lines were installed um, originally in the 1910s and then replaced in the 1930s, I think, Michael. But the, the reason I bring it up all the time is they really constrict where city of Renton utilities can fit in our own road because so much of the footprint in these roads are taking up, taken up by the Seattle water lines. Um, let's see, looks like, uh, do, I, do I need to go back to the, uh, um, the information slide? Feel free. I'm not right. seeing any raised hands or any additional questions, but we'll give everyone a minute or two to do that. I think the one piece I'll add as we get ready for these intersection closures for businesses in particular is, you know, we're certainly doing a lot to get the word out there so that both your customers and employees kind of know what to expect ahead of time. It's a lot easier to and less frustrating when you kind of know what to expect. Um, but please feel free as we're sharing some of these maps, as we're sharing some of the, the, ex, the maps about parking, um, to copy and share those freely, um, be that in emails to customers, confirming appointments in our kind of COVID era, or um, on your social media or websites. Um, we ultimately just want to make sure people can effectively plan ahead there. Yeah, I guess. Um, Oh, go ahead, Keith. Well, I was going to add some things. As you, as you mentioned, some of the impact to the businesses are even more direct. I'm going to scroll up a little bit here. Let's go to South Third Street. So, of course, uh, besides the detours and the cul-de-sacs, we have businesses on all four corners where we're building the new sidewalk. And I didn't really touch on that yet. And so let's touch on that. If I scroll back up, this situation here. So this business is common ground. Um, and Mr. Woon, we've worked with him. But the sidewalk is going to come out all the way to the edge of his building and get rebuilt. So that's roughly 16 businesses total across the street. Here is the Holistic uh, Sisters business. Um, when will that happen? It's going to be fit in around as we're building the intersections. So it, and I cannot say when each business will be, get their new sidewalk. The plan is, is as we, as the contractor and the concrete contractor identify windows in, in their work, for example, maybe they poured a half an intersection and it needs to cure for 24 hours then they will identify corners to be worked on and, I, and contact that business three to five days in advance. We've already talked to all of you this past summer about hours and the like, but we'll get more specific. 
myself or maybe our contractor will be working directly with you to find out when it will work to do this sidewalk. Um, do, do we need to work after 3 p.m. every day or do we need to work before 9 a.m. every day? Are you not open on Sundays? Or uh, I, when we've talked to some businesses, I did hear a, one business just say, you know what, tell me what day you want me to close and we'll just close for that day. We're not asking businesses to close, but we're, we're gonna be very, very personal and unique to each business. I, in fact, I believe across the street here, the holistic, they have a second entrance that they can use. So we can build you know, one day and run one entrance and one in the other. Um, there's, we, we have done some night work out there. I don't know if the sidewalk can be done at night, but there, that may even be the possibility. I'd love to be able to tell you, go home and when you come back the next morning, voila, you have brand new sidewalk. More than likely it will be, maybe one day we'll tear this all out and we'll put down some temporary asphalt or maybe even wooden planking right to your door as for a 24 hour uh, temporary situation. Uh, so this business here, Common Ground, behind them, had a, you're looking south, if you turned around, that's the block that the, that the other project has been replacing the sidewalk on. And you've seen the temporary um, plywood ramps to the businesses like at Four Generals uh, Brewery. It'd be that kind of scenario, but we'll be very specifically working directly and not um, to, to let people know. Because uh, I know that's another upcoming item of work that people are interested in, and the the details of the schedule I can't specifically say uh, right now. Um, Mario, that was one thing I thought maybe I should touch on. You had... No, I think that was great, Keith. And okay. I think for me, as someone who's not technical, understanding that with sidewalk work, the the weather dependency in terms of not just is it actively raining, but how much moisture it is when we're talking about fitting it in, that's and the, the windows of opportunity, um, how dependent that is on, on weather, um, I know was interesting for me to learn as well. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, concrete is not as weather dependent as asphalt. Uh, you don't want to do it in freezing, but I think everybody can agree we're, we're done probably with freezing temperatures this year. We're into February. Of course, now that I say that, it'll probably snow next week. But um, after February 15th, I think uh, unless it is a serious downpour and you're having trouble controlling the water, you can cover in tarp concrete. Uh, and as long as not too much is going into it as you're pouring it. So the, there's not too big a concerns on the weather with the concrete work. Uh, like I mentioned, asphalt, doing the final asphalt uh, overlay of these four streets, doing the final striping, that can get a little more weather dependent. You stripe when it's too cold, your striping has gone in four months. You just, waste, you just wasted all that money. Wonderful. So we've gotten another question in here, which is for the cul-de-sacs, will there be enough space for both turning around and for parking? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so we actually have to, let's see here. Let me go down. So let's pretend it was this intersection on third. At this location here, um, we, the way it would work is we have the, the temporary pedestrian walkways that you see out there currently. And then we would not allow probably parking for two spaces in order to be out, because you need from curb to curb to turn around. So picture a cul-de-sac in a neighborhood. As you come in, the cul-de-sac, you know, wows out. And so that's, that's why we won't be able to allow parking for about two spaces on either side and so that we can get a turnaround. If it was a, a UPS truck, they would probably need to execute a three-point turnaround. A Ford F-150 pickup might be able to make it. Typical passenger vehicles, no problem. You get into like, like a, a Budweiser truck with a small cab and a small trailer. That's where we want to um, know in advance, B 
be communicating with those businesses and have them uh, communicating on the hotline so that if, if, if they are having trouble figuring out how their delivery is going to occur, we can assist them. We can have a flagger on site to meet, maybe even back a truck down into the cul-de-sac. Um, we expected that during the three week closure of the railroad tracks. And I, I think that some of the drivers must be adept at handling downtowns because we didn't get a single request for assistance from any trucks. Um, but again, we're in, we, we are anticipating that. Hopefully that answers the question. Great, thank you. And I am not seeing any raised hands or any other questions. Um, certainly this is not the only conversation. And if, as we start to get into the work, you know, you have concerns, you have suggestions, you have questions, do not hesitate to, to reach out to the hotline, to the email. Um, we also have every other Friday, um, virtual office hours that are kind of an opportunity to just drop in and ask questions in real time where you can guarantee you've got access to the team and all that information is on the website as well. But we'll send out after this to, to folks who registered both the slides um, and some of that information just so it's easily handy. I guess Mario, I would also add, that I don't, didn't see her name here, but Diane Dobson with the Chamber of Commerce has been very uh, proactive in communicating with the businesses and with us. If you don't want to call construction uh, or our hotline, Diane, you know, she loves to uh, relay information back and forth. And so we really have appreciated Diane's assistance. Agree, Diane's been a, a wonderful partner. Um, Kimberly, I see you have a question about Luther's table in particular. Um, I will allow you to unmute um, so that you can ask about that. Um, but if you can speak a little bit to where where downtown you're situated, that'd be helpful context. So this isn't really a Wells and Williams question, so maybe I should just wait. But Luther's table is on second, right across the street from the high school, and we're Temp right now we're closed, but we plan on reopening, but it looks like our reopening time may be right during the window of when road work is done uh, in front of Luther's table. So I'm just, when you say it's not a two year project, I wonder, is there any way to figure out when you'll be where? Um, yeah, th th this Mike, yes, yes, there is a way to figure out when we'll be where. We don't necessarily have that exact yet, but as we get further in this project and we start to work out a better schedule with a contractor, um, we will definitely be working with people as to um, where we will be and when. So, um, you know, so the Luther's Table site, we are going to be putting a brand new sewer uh, in front of that. Um, storm will be across the street, so that will probably be a lot less impact to you. Uh, one benefit for you on the sewer, one of the reasons we're putting the sewer in on that side of the street is because your side sewer has to cross that Seattle pipeline and it is a big obstacle in the way causing problems for your side sewer. So we're moving the sewer to the other side of the road so all the side sewers don't have to cross the Seattle pipeline. Yeah, it just looks like we're surrounded with on yes. both corners. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, I know that there, when I mentioned it at our board meeting, there was a little bit of anxiety, wondering how isolated we will be um, as we try to reopen. So yep. I will wait to hear from you um, or when you reach out to the businesses, I'll make sure that we're part of that. Okay. Thank and you. Mike, Michael, I'll speak for you, which I shouldn't since I'm in transportation and not utilities, but Kim in general, I think the utility contractors like to start at the deepest spot and come up. And so obviously not all of this is happening at one time. And what's happened in like the Wells Williams project, we start deep, we start coming up until we run into maybe something underground, a conflict that we didn't anticipate. And sometimes the contractor might have to move to another location until that 
conflict gets resolved. And so contractors are pretty adept and nimble at bouncing around. Um, Michael, if you, I don't know if you wanted to add to that, but you know, it's, it won't all be at the same time here. Right, and, and that's the biggest thing to remember is this is scheduled for a two year project, but we won't be in front of your site for two years. Right. There's a lot of flexibility, you know, just as, a, as an example of what could happen is we start with the sewer at Burnett and Third and install that sewer all the way through to Rainier. Um, at some point, if we get, one, once we get to the shallower part towards Rainier, they might start a second crew someplace as long as we can determine that it's not going to kind of get in each other's way or, or double up on the impacts on any one person. So for example, you know, as they're working on that, they might start the sewer line at second Rainier and that line is going to be going from second Rainier toward the east. Um, um, and then at some point, you know, as we're going through, you know, you know, they'll come back and start working on the storm line on third. Um, and then, you know, so they might be working on the sewer on, on second, the storm on third at the same time. So I don't think they'll ever have more than two crews working. Um, we also have the work over in on Mill Avenue. But, um, you know, so we will be bouncing around. There'll be, um, you know, I'll probably get more complaints about, oh, you're back, then are you still here? But neither one of them is, is I, I think, really, you know, um, you know, optimal for anybody. Um, I, I guess that's my concern is that yeah. um, if the work may not last for two years, but I'm wondering if the um, impact, you know, as far as completing the, so we get back to normal might last two years. So will, will things be torn up in front of us because of periodic um, work? You see what I'm asking? Yes, and um, the way this project is scheduled is as they come through, they the contractor wants to put permanent patches down as fast as possible. So it's, it's not gonna be temporary cold mix patches, it's gonna be hot mix patches. Um, the goal is to have the road, um, you know, drivable. Uh, um, now, you know, that being said, we're not going to be trying to make a freeway smooth road, but um, right. you know, it, it's, it's supposed to be the final patch that when they're done, they just do a grind and overlay as opposed to have to strip it out and, and do a final patch. Okay. So uh, where we will have some issues is there are times when the utilities cross. So we might come through, do one, and then we might have to cut into that new patch to do the next one. Right. But the goal is, is between <laughs> point A and point B that we will have things as close to back to normal as we can until we come back. Okay, sorry to have just a personal question, but it just, I was amazed at the timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no need to apologize at all. The reality is all of this work has really personal impacts and um, those are the types of conversations we want to be having. So thank you for that question. Hi, Kim, um, I'm sorry. This is uh, Anne, one of the other project managers working with Mike um, on the project. Did you have an idea of when you guys were trying to reopen? Not at this point. Um, okay. Yeah, what, it'll be within that two-year time frame, though. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> Because we will, we should have our schedules um, coming from the contractor here in the next couple of weeks, um, and I think they're anticipating starting construction probably late, mid to late March. Um, I think is kind of a rough estimate, but um, don't hold us to that until we actually have a schedule in hand. Yeah. Um, but as and we that, get those, we will post them on the website too. And then if you have any other questions, uh, Keith had that the website for the uh, downtown project. You can always send that send questions over to that, and we can reach out to you personally as well. Super. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The other thing for Kim, I know you know, and, and any other buddy, anybody else, welcome to come every other Friday. It's a lot like this where we're just all staring at our computers talking to each other and it doesn't matter if you're a resident or a business and frankly if your question isn't even related but you just want to come and sometimes we're we're waiting for people and other times we have people and we just and we're going to probably just continue to do that even uh if wells and williams is all done and open this summer 
uh, you know, Michael and Ann might just keep that going through, through their project just so that people, everybody downtown, businesses and residents feel like it's real easy to, just to have a voice. Um, although I guess, I guess it, this, th that every other Friday originated from Diane Dobson inviting me to come to the Chamber of Commerce building just on every other Friday, just to be sitting at like her conference table to be available and then COVID hit. So, you know, maybe by the time the DUIP project is in full swing, you guys could be sitting at a table instead of staring at computer screens. <laughs> yeah. At Luther's table. Yeah. <laughs> Luther's table. <laughs> right, right now, what we are planning for DUIP is we will have um, planned a regular meeting like this, say every two weeks. And then we're also planning that uh, at this point, I'm thinking maybe once a week on a specific day at a specific time that um, um, Ann or I will be actually walking the project site and give people, you know, we'll hope, hopefully, um, you know, we'll, we'll be recognizable, but not on dartboards. But, um, you know, so you'll have a time you can look at, you can see us and you come, you know, come on out and say, hey, you know, I didn't want to didn't want to email you, but I got a question for you. So we're, we're going to try to make ourselves available on the job site. Yeah. I was supposed to do that, Michael, and then this year happened and yep. <laughs> here I sit. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all for the conversation with this. I'm um, excited to see how it continues to evolve. We had another question, which was, if it's possible to see the signage and route being planned for access to our individual businesses. Um, yes, I could either bring up the detour that applies to that business or perhaps uh, what we have um, suggested is if a business wants it specific for them, contact us. And I believe, believe I'm trying to remember, I think we've even provided a specific flyer for that a business to provide. I think someone was doing invoicing and they, they provided uh, business um, information. So we can provide even a flyer uh, with access to your business if need be. Does that answer the question, Mario? Yeah, I think um, to just add on to that, we could very easily, if you wanted to use variations of these maps and some of your um, materials, we can put kind of a star or an indicator to show where your business is relative to that. And um, Heather, I can also allow you to unmute if you want to elaborate on that too. Hi, thanks. Um, I own the hair salon Method of Madness right on third or right on Wells between second and third there. And we have a parking lot. A lot of our um, people can come park in, mm -hmm. but that is accessible directly from wells i have talked to um I, I maybe can take this offline i don't need to do it in a big group but i'm just wondering if there's a different place i can shuttle our clients to go park um there's a big parking lot at the yoga studio behind us that's not in use and that owner has said that our clients can park there and mm -hmm. i'd rather route them that way because there's a like there's a barrier between the back of our salon mm -hmm. and that entrance to that parking lot so if there's a way to route them back there that might be helpful i, I don't know i think i just okay. talk to somebody offline yeah well let me touch on it real quickly since we were supposed to go to four and people can hang up if they want um so as as a public agency we can't direct people across private property However, so we would we would need to work with you on the specifics of that, Heather, because if you have an agreement with with another private entity, you know, then no problem there in terms of, you know, sharing and we'd let you work that out because I know <laughs> there's some other parts of downtown where two different in the businesses might not share their parking lots quite so uh, nicely. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we have one parking lot where we do have an attendant walking the lot, uh, watching for people. Um, so, you know, we 
we can't um, in our detours direct people off of the public right of way. So we would we could work with you and maybe provide you a template and and such, and you could work with the yoga people because yeah, I know what you're saying. It makes sense. There's there's some rather large lots that are unused. In fact, there was a, a joking just recently about the the banks. Banks have rather large parking lots from what the 60s and 70s, and nowadays. Banks don't want you coming into their building. They want you doing everything online. So we have some rather large parking lots. I can imagine people are going to perhaps use those parking lots to cut through. But as a public agency, of course, we can't encourage that or <laughs> or direct people that 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 way. So yeah, let's keep keep in touch, Heather, and maybe contact our hotline or our email. And because uh, I know where you're talking about. It, can you see my mouse moving? Yes. Okay, you're right. And you're, you, are you adjacent to the four generals? We're right next door to four generals. Yeah, just the south of them, right? So, so you probably know David Bukite and Ashish because they've been doing the sidewalk project in front of you. Yeah, that's a, that's been a big project. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, thank you, Heather. Thank you. Mario? I am not seeing any other questions. Um, and so I think we can call that a wrap, but really appreciate everybody taking the, the time out of their day to get a, an overview and a preview of what to expect um, and for the great questions. And certainly continue to have the, the specific questions because um, that's what makes the difference in the day-to-day -day level in terms of how we navigate these impacts. Okay, thank you everybody.